So today we got a double dose of Star Screams to talk about, some holiday items, and a little bit of a public service announcement for one of our important members of our Transformer world. First thing we're going to be covering is we talked about that Starscream yesterday, the studio series core class Bumblebee movie Starscream. We finally got some really high quality images from Takar Tomi's website because the pre-orders are going to be going up as we speak right now for the Japanese market. And again, it's that studio series core class Bumblebee movie Starscream. Now we got some really nice images from all the different angles and everything. It's looking really good for a little core class figure. Obviously, we're going to see probably a Blitzwing retool at some point, a Sea of Seeker repaints, and everything that we always expect from a Starscream mold at this point. We all know how it goes. But we got another one to talk about today, <clears throat> and it's the big one. And it's of a Transformers Legacy United Voyager class Cybertron Starscream. We knew about these from the listings a while back. This was found in package in Chile. And we have the full photo shoot of all the craziness, what's going on with it, and uh, a beautiful update to that old Galaxy Force Starscream, Cybertron Starscream design. And he's looking fantastic. Nails that original design right down to the show and everything like that. Alt mode looks really good. Great use of uh, clear plastic for all of the, the weapons and everything. He has the two swords that swing out. From his sides and everything like the original. He has a clear purple gun like the original toy and the show model. And the big one is he even has, using all that clear plastic, a Cybertron planet key that plugs into his back. No gimmick, mind you. Nothing really flips out or anything, but it is the nice touch that, that is included with that because that was a big part of the Cybertron Galaxy Force TV show. Makes me wonder now... You know, maybe in the future we'll get maybe a Speedia 500 repaint of that override Nitro Convoy mold. And maybe there'll be a Planet Key included this time around to kind of mix it up. Because, you know, that one also had a little slot that you could put something. So, very interesting. What's also great about this is, for people that aren't really aware, you know, that original design, that Cybertron Starscream design, uh, it does a way better job, this one here than even what the original toys did in terms of matching what was on the show. And it obviously has better articulation because now it's gutted of the gimmicks and everything. But another element to it is that, you know, here in America, the only way we got this character was we got the big Supreme class Starscream. We got that tiny legend scale one. And then we got the Voyager class, but it was in every other color scheme, but the traditional Starscream show colors from Cybertron. The only t way you got the screen accurate version of it was through Japan, through Galaxy Force. So now America is going to get something that's Voyager scaled. And in my opinion, looks even better than what we got before. So looking really, really, really good. I am loving what we see here. Now the next question is, let's talk about the uh, repaint treatment. Because this is a guy that's loaded for that. Now keep in mind, um, both Thundercracker and Skywarp in the Cybertron storyline are completely different molds. So we're not going to probably be seeing Thundercracker Skywarp repaints from this Starscream. But that doesn't change the fact that Coneheads were used for this. Uh, Sunstorm was a repaint from Starscream. And probably most importantly out of all of them is the Shattered Glass Starscream was originally from this Cybertron mold. And it's a shame because if we should have got this mold sooner and then the... Uh, Shattered Glass Starscream that we got back in 2001, excuse me, 2021, that was uh, from that Siege mold that suffers terribly from yellowing. Would have been nice if we got this one instead and got a really good update because that Shattered Glass Starscream that's a Bacon exclusive goes for crazy money today. So pretty awesome stuff. This is a Shogo Hasui design based off of the old Don Figueroa concept during that Aaron Archer era. And now has been updated for modern collectors, and he looks fantastic. It'll fit beautifully in both your Cybertron display vintage or that of your brand new display that we have today. And it won't make you break the bank having to buy a Japanese one. Um, you know, now that I think about it, we might even get a mild repaint of it into a different colored Starscream and just get a crown accessory and we might get that King Starscream. This is a loaded mold that they could probably do a lot with over a very long span of time. 
I get a feeling we're going to be talking about this mold in probably two years from now, three years from now. Definitely looks really cool. Awesome stuff. Let me know what you think about that one. We also have a small leak. Uh, this comes from a fan in the Transformer community called L Luchonis or Lochonis. And I think he works or he, sh or he she works at Hallmark because we get a sneak peek from the Hallmark computers of a future Hallmark Optimus Prime 2024 Christmas ornament. And uh, this Christmas ornament clearly pulls from the Hasbro Pulse Christmas Optimus Prime that we got along with a little bit of that Super 7 Reactions Holiday Optimus Prime. You know, we got that Xmas themed stuff, the Xmas themed, you know, gun candy cane, the little Santa hat on the top, which again pulls from the Reaction Super 7 one. Uh, again, it's a little early to be talking about Christmas ornaments in March of 2024, but it does show that something is in the pipes that will be coming. So if you want to get a little holiday themed Optimus for your Christmas tree, uh, get ready for that in the near future. And the last thing we're going to cover is something that I talked about just briefly on our live stream on Saturday, on the, just this past week, and it's that of Ron Freeman. So Ron Freeman, very important figure in the Transformer world. Um, I'll get into a moment just everything that he's uh, you know done for us. But uh, he's going through some serious medical problems right now. He's been battling cancer for, cancer for a while. And the cancer treatment center that he's been going to, he has to travel large distances to. He's recently had to move. And, you know, between the Writers Guild giving all writers problems, retirement being almost impossible, the American medical complex being as expensive as it is, he needs our help. He's opened up a GoFundMe. Uh, his assistant contacted me to let me know that, hey, this stuff is going on. And if we could, you know, get some help from the Transformer fandom uh, this guy, again, very important to our Transformer world. Most of us fans know him because he was the spearhead behind the script that later morphed into what we know today as the 86 movie that we all love to death. And, you know, my favorite Transformer movie of all time, favorite movie of all time. But, you know, people don't realize, like, he was the spearhead behind him getting the female character of RC created and put into the movie. He did it for his daughter personally. Um, but what people also don't know, too, is, like, he was a guy who rewrote a lot of the scripts of the G1 cartoon episodes and the rewriting that he did was the kind of rewriting that opened up the world and created that world building and culture of Cybertron through little lines like, you know, nickel knuckle sandwich or laser cores or, you know, associating turbo char chargers or equilibriums as part of Cybertronian biology and putting it in that dialogue there. Oh, he met, he damaged my equilibrium you know, even stuff like mentioning Petro Rabbits or the Crystal City, you know, creating all these things that this is a bigger world and there's there's so much here to Transformers and Cybertronians than what we just see on the surface. So he was a big proponent of that. And again, he grew that world and created kind of that science for it through his dialogue. And again, also, he was responsible for all the dialogue quirks that created characters. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have Warpath with the pows and the bangs or the unique candor that Trax has or the very high nature of Beachcomber, the anxiety of Red Alert. I could go on and on. But he wrote that into those characters. So those characters that we love today are primarily because of the uniqueness that was created through Ron Friedman and his writing and stuff. Not to mention he did tons of stuff with G.I. Joe. I could go on and on. The Joe community also has a lot to thank from Ron also. But, you know, he has a GoFundMe up right now. It would really help him out to uh, be able to help him out and be, be able to deal with his cancer treatment. He's a, a gem of a human being. I've met him twice due to Transformer conventions and stuff. I've bought stuff from him. <laughs> I've given him quite a, quite a sub of money back in the day for getting stuff through his garage and everything. And I just want to make sure a really cool dude uh, in the Transformer fandom and a very important person in our Transformer community that's created so much. Uh, is taken care of. So I'll post the link in our pinned comment and in our description of our segment today. And you can go check out the GoFundMe for Ron Freeman and go help him out too. And uh, we're a great community and I know we could do stuff together to help out someone that's delivered so much to us and joy and everything like that. And that's it more or less for the news today. Didn't want to end it too much on a somber note, but hopefully it'll end in a positive note when this is all said and done. But thank you all for listening to the Transformer Slag podcast today. And I'll talk to you in the near future and let me know what you think about all the great news we have to talk about today.